This is your Goofy Uncle Tree Jam, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of Mass Effect 1. Last time we left off, we decided to honor the late Admiral Kohoku by taking the fight to another Cerberus stronghold in the Columbia system. We landed on planet Nephron and engaged Cerberus forces at a remote facility. Upon securing the facility, we ran across a data terminal. We downloaded what information about Cerberus we could before the terminal could purge all of its data. With our job done on Nephron, we headed back to the Normandy. But before we could chart a course elsewhere, we received a transmission from a mysterious individual claiming to be working for the Shadow Broker. He explained that the late Admiral Kohoku requested info on the locations of Cerberus facilities in exchange for turning over any data found from these facilities to the Shadow Broker. Rather than comply, we elected to withhold this data from the Broker, believing our loyalty belonged to the Alliance. The agent was not pleased. So it seems that this decision may have some consequences for us and may come back to haunt us. Regardless of whether or not we could save Kahoku, we did manage to secure information about Cerberus and it seems that the Alliance will be able to make use of that. But for the time being, it is now time for us to consider tackling one of the last assignments of Mass Effect 1 with regards to this playthrough. We're going to be doing UNC Doctor at Risk, or actually that should be renamed UNC Dead Scientists. For now, we actually have the Doctor at Risk, but once we move over to the appropriate system, we will be able to have that updated, and Admiral Hackett will have something for us. It turns out that this assignment is tied to Shepard's background, specifically her sole survivor background. So let's head over to the Newton system and prepare for our next assignment. For this episode, we're actually going to skip roaming around the Citadel because I do want to go ahead and get back into the thick of things. So, let's go ahead and leave the Citadel docks and get out of the Serpent Nebula. And our next stop is going to be Nephiron. Or, I'm sorry, not Nephiron. I'm just kidding, folks. We're going to be into the Kepler Verge, and this time, we're heading to the Newton system. I will see you guys here momentarily. Message coming in. Patching it through. I've received some information I thought you'd want to see, Commander. Someone is killing former Alliance scientists. There have been four deaths in the past month. Former scientists? Sounds like someone has a project they'd like to keep secret. We found a connection between the scientists and you. They all worked on a classified project several years ago, on a coup's. This can't have anything to do with what happened to me on a coos. Those Thresher Maws killed dozens of soldiers. If this was more than just an accident, we need to know. Commander, Shepard, what you do with this is up to you. I just thought you'd want to know. There was one other scientist on the project, Dr. Wayne. I'm transmitting his last known coordinates. Good luck. Fifth lead out. So now the plot is starting to thicken. We turns out the sum has something to do with Shepard's background with regards to what happened on a coos many years ago. Before we can go ahead and embark on the assignment, let's go ahead and take a look around the system of Newton and get any resources that we can. The planet of Klenkori does have some of Matriarch Dilanaga's writing, so we can go ahead and update our Asari writing collection. Now we've already completed the relevant uh, collection quest, so we don't have to collect this, but nonetheless, there's a little something for you folks if you want to use that info for your playthroughs. Our next stop is a planet of Junkro. And we can go ahead and get some hydrogen. Done deal. And I might want to come back to one of the planets once I'm right before we hit Antaram, which is going to be the location of this assignment. Let's go to Sesmos real quick. And it seems we have nothing here. Nonetheless, I will go ahead and just leave this up on the screen long enough for you guys to pause the video and read it at your own pace. Now, we're actually going to go back to one of the plants we just scanned, Klenkori. I'm going to go ahead and read this description real quick. Klenkori is a rock and ice planet with an atmosphere composed of chlorine and argon. The frozen surface is mainly composed of potassium with deposits of iron. 
Glencore is famously claimed by the eccentric Volus billionaire Kuman Shoal. He claims that a vision of higher being told him to seek on Glencore the lost crypts of beings of light. These entities were supposedly created at the dawn of time to protect organic life from synthetic machine devils. Shoal has been excavating on Glencore's toxic surface for two decades at great expense. No government has valued the world enough to evict his small army of mercenaries. Now, those of you who have been long-term veterans of the Mass Effect series, especially Mass Effect 3, can probably understand what this might, um, the implications of this description right here. Now, I'm not going to get into much of a debate on it because I feel that's a debate for a separate video. It's not really relevant to our current assignment, and I believe that it deserves its own discussion, but let's not have it here. Let's save that for another time. For now, let's go ahead and zoom out. I just want to go ahead and show that to you guys because some of you who have played Mass Effect 3 will understand the implication of that description right there. And there's just been a lot of... I think we can all agree if we've played Mass Effect 3 that the ending was controversial to many fans of the series. But let's go ahead and leave it there for now. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prep for Planetfall on Entourage. Though Ontrom's surface is uncomfortably hot, its nitrogen oxygen atmosphere and abundant shallow seas make it an ideal candidate for habitation by most known species. Unfortunately, the orbit of the moon of Thanal has slowly been decaying since the system coalesced. Its proximity is beginning to have tidal effects, and its dynamo-like revolution through Ontrom's magnetic field is generating increasing powerful electrical storms. While some have suggested, the placement of Mass Effect drives in an attempt to lighten the moon and correct its orbit, the scale of such a project, tens of thousands of drives costing enough to bankrupt the government of all Citadel races, make it a pipe dream. A multiracial effort of under is underway to catalog and preserve the unique genetic diversity of Antaram's vibrant young biosphere. Exogeny Corp and Heoin Genomics represent the Alliance's share of the effort. So, it seems we have one of the last green worlds we're going to be landing on for a while. So let's go ahead and just appreciate the environment out while we can. And at the meantime, we have to figure out who's behind these dead scientists. Let's begin Planetfall. For this assignment, we're actually going to bring Kate Nalenko along with us. Not necessarily the most ideal choice if you're a frontline combatant, but Caden's got some very useful biotic and tech talents. And we're also going to bring Erd Not Rex. But ladies and gents, we are set. We are go for Antaram. Let's begin our orbital drop. Alright, we have made Plentiful. Like I said, one of the last green worlds that we're going to be hitting in Mass Effect 1 for some time, at least as far as assignments are concerned. The other green world we're going to be landing on is going to be a mission world, one that has a very pivotal moment in the Mass Effect 1 story. But let's go ahead and leave that for then. For now, it's time to look around for resources. Our first stop is going to be the anomaly right here, after which we're going to head down this way and swing around here and focus on this area. Over here, we're going to find the underground facility where the dead scientists are. But, for now, let's go ahead and move over to the anomaly, and I will cut the footage and I'll resume when I get to my destination. I will see you guys in just a bit. Alright, we've come across a Turian corpse that appears to be probably the remnant of the member of a Turian colony, or some sort of Turian encampment. Well, let's go ahead and recover the, the artifact on this corpse real quick. Claim this real quick. I'm gonna wait, bide my time a little bit here. And make a mad dash, and there we go, we've got a Turian insignia from the Bostra outpost. We don't really need to collect the insignias at this point, we've already completed the Turian insignia's collection quest. Nonetheless, like I said before, I'm gonna keep collecting these items just so you guys can keep an eye on where the little goodies are, little freebies in Mass Effect 1. But now that we're done here, it's time for us to move southwest. And we're going to go ahead up this spot for some ore. And we also have uh, a little interesting something. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned there's going to be a very unique space cow-esque animal. Let's go ahead and meet this little aberration of nature, shall we? So I'm actually decided to head back before I went to that um, 
spot where the ore was, I wanted to go ahead and just walk around, get a little sights on nature. We're actually back at the location where we discovered the Turian corpse, but this is some of the wildlife that inhabits the worlds of Mass Effect 1. Now right now, and they're not very hostile to us, they just mind their own business, and we're gonna mind our business as well. Kill them all! Or... All clear. Okay. I think I'm fine, right? I'm fine. You guys are not mean, you're not hostile. Oh boy, he's going for Caden. Don't kill Caden just yet, little guy. Don't do it. Don't do it. But, like I was saying, these guys are actually not hostile to you. But it is curious to find a bunch of Turian corpses here. I think we better not stay or just better not overstay our welcome. Let's go ahead and make our way back to the Mako. Hey, what's up, guy? How's it going, ma'am? Hmm. All right. Peace out, folks. Anyway, I just want to go ahead and walk with nature a little bit. I can't be Steve Irwin, but I could be Commander Shepard, and that counts for something, right? But now, it's actually time for us to really go for the ore deposit right here, and we're going to meet a certain space cow. Probably the last time we meet this space cow ever. So, I will see you guys momentarily. Alright, we are not that far off from the ore deposit, but I want to go ahead and just look around real quick, because there's actually one cow you want to avoid, uh, for good reason. Let's see if we can get an eye bird's eye view on that cow. I believe... There we go. Look at that, folks. This is the unique cow you will actually find. Now, like I mentioned before, they don't really look like cows to me. It looks like someone took an anteater and an elk and crossed them together, and then just gave them two extra arms for good measure. But... This is the unique animal you can find. Now, here's the thing about the shifty looking cow. You don't want to get too close, because if you do, it will start stealing your credits. I think as soon as you turn around. So, we're gonna go ahead and keep our distance from that cow. Don't want to trust it. You can't trust those shifty cows, man. You just can't. You can't do it. They're up to no good. They will take your money and your credits. How they can steal electronic money, I have no idea. They must have a credit card reader and ATM shoved all the way up their ass. That's the only explanation I can think of right now. I'm telling you, man. Cows in the future, they have ATMs everywhere. Up their ass, in their ears, in their face. How do they steal electronic money? I have no idea. And I am so tempted to just end this cow. I'm tempted. All right, you know what? Hey, get, 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 gather, get. Problem solved. Now that we're done here, let's go ahead and just uh, make our way elsewhere. We've already completed this ore deposit right here. We have yet another ore deposit, a debris pile, and finally the mission or assignment specific area. Let's go ahead and make our way east, folks, and I will see you guys momentarily. All right, we are just above the ore deposit, but it seems that we've already drawn the attention of the hostiles around here. So let's go ahead and make our way downhill. All right, and now we've gotten some palladium. Let's go ahead and grab this deposit real quick. Now we are still... We are still vulnerables here, so let's not waste our time. Let's go ahead and grab what we need and get the hell out of Dodge. And there we go, got some Palladium, folks. Keeping the Alliance proud, keeping them well funded, giving them the resources. Just like that. And now that we're here, it's time to go ahead and play Sniper. I'm gonna go ahead and park the Mako up here. Get out on foot. And we're going to go ahead and change out our loadout real quick. And we're ready to engage the enemy. Let's go ahead and Caden and Rex wait back there. And we're going to take some time and try to snipe these guys down. It seems they've still got a beat us. They got a little bit of a beat on us there. Alright, let's see if we can spot some bad guys here. Let's go ahead and remove the cover real quick. A 
Might have knocked him into a wall. There we go. One sniper is down. Let's go and take care of the other, um, other few hostiles. They're still using cover there. All right. We're clearing out the cover, making sure they can't use it anymore. At this point, that kind of cover doesn't really do much against our weapons. Honestly, you're just asking to get killed. Alright, we're thinning out the enemy herd a little bit. Going ahead and taking care of the remaining fighters here. And there we go. There's another one or two left. We're going to need to move in close in order to finish them off. Let's go ahead and turn our loadout again. And we're ready to engage them at close range. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clear out the hostiles around the facility, and then we're going to move to get like the loot around the debris pile, and then come back and clear out the inside of the facility, and figure out what happened to the missing scientists, or the dead scientists in this case. So let's go ahead and engage the remaining hostiles at the base. Go ahead and just announce our presence there, because we can. Also in this universe, if they can see you coming, no point in sneaking up on them, to be honest. Not unless you happen to break line of sight before you can even engage them. Or in this case, prevent line of sight. But here, it's a pretty open area and they can spot you very easily when you're in the Mako. Let's go ahead and deploy Sabotage. Or no, let's go ahead and deploy Lift. And we have a sniper we need to take care of quickly. I had to go ahead and make a mad dash there, folks. I want to get out of range of that other fighter and focus on the sniper for now. Now. Alright, sniper is down. We only have one more hostile left. See if you can find him. There we go. Hey, you miss me, buddy? Get dealt with. Let's have Rex switch up to a shotgun. Yay! Gravity! Get back in the Mako and finish him off. This is the one fun thing about biotics on this planet. Enemies go flying. Enemies go flying, and it is fun as hell. Alright, where are you? Alright, get ready for it. Get ready. Get that way, baby. Have you like me now, bitch? Mmm, so tasty. I'm gonna miss doing this. I really am. Now that we're done here, let's go ahead and claim the debris right here. And I'm not gonna cut. I'm not gonna cut the footage at all. We're just gonna try and. Uh, you're gonna see me try and make my way up here, the slow and patient way. Ah, another fine day in the life of Commander Shepard. Here we are in Antaram, and it seems that. We're going to relish the last of the assignments of Mass Effect 1. We still have a remaining few assignments left with regards to our penultimate Citadel visit, the one right before the last mission of the game. And we also have, I think, a few more assignments um, elsewhere. I don't know if it'd be... Um, I need to check whether or not the Vermeer stuff count as assignments or if they're part of the main quest. Um, I'll go ahead and update that in the description real quick. Well, let's go ahead and claim the loot right here. And... There we go. We've gotten the debris from that crash probe. Let's go ahead down to the facility. 
and let's go ahead and get ready for one hell of a fight. We're gonna be in close quarters, so we need to be ready for anything at this point. So, let's not dilly-dally too much here, folks. Let's make our way around the bend, over the cliff, and down the side, baby. That's right, that's how we do it. I wanna see if I can knock this, um, this box out of here. Get your weak shit out of here, bitch. Peace out. There we go. And there we go. Because I felt like it. And now we're ready to breach the facility and engage the hostiles inside. We're going to be in close quarters and we have a good number of mercenaries to take out. Let's go ahead and make our way inside and it seems that we can already see some dead sentries outside. Things are not boding well for whatever scientists are left inside the facility. So, we need to go ahead and get ready for contact. Let's go ahead and make our way in slowly. And as a foreign as always, I'm going to tell our squad mates to wait right about here, and we're going to scout out ahead. Make the most of our opportunities of spotting enemies while we can. Let's go ahead and grab some loot real quick before we do that. Take a look around here, and grab whatever's in this malfunctioning object. And there we go, folks. Now, it's time to the belly of the beast. Yeah. The belly of the beast. Try and say that when your tongue is really, really dry. Let's make our way in very slowly. Alright, no one has noticed us just yet. We can go ahead and make the most of this. Real, make it real smooth. And just because we can, I'm going to go ahead and have... Caden open up with a tech attack on this fusion containment cell, after which we will engage the hostiles. Alright, let's make our way back to the tunnel. And let's wait for the enemy right about here. Alright, they already got immunity up, so let's go ahead and bring Caden and Rex along with us. We're gonna have one hell of a fight going, folks. All right, let's go ahead and get him in the air. All right, one Krogenberg is down. We're gonna have to be careful because we have a bunch of people with the line of sight on us. So this is the one dangerous thing about engaging enemies in areas like these. They have many ways of flanking you and you don't wanna be in their crosshairs of a bunch of mercenaries who happen to be good close quarters combatants. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and turn up my immunity real quick, and we're gonna need Rex to turn on his immunity. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. All right, now I'm thinking the best thing to do is to go ahead and put a little neural shock on this guy right here, or let's go ahead and use throw instead. All right, now do a sabotage. He's already pulled out a shotgun, so unfortunately he's not sabotaged at this point. So, what we will do, we'll go ahead and deploy Neural Shock here, and retreat this way. And we're going to bide our time in the entrance way real quick. Uh, before we do anything else, let's deploy Damping here for no reason. Let's go ahead and deploy another sabotage. Alright, now let's wait for our squad mates powers to recharge a little bit before we move in. Now let's go ahead and deploy some immunity, have Rex do the same, and have Caden deploy barrier. 
and we're moving in. Hold the line. Hold the line. All right, let's get a lift going. Let's go, go, go. We're gonna need to warp real quick. I'm gonna have Caden deploy. No, no, I'm, yeah, Caden deploy a little sabotage here. And now, let's go ahead and have Neural Shock on this person right here. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! And I'm gonna deploy Sabotage. Alright. Now, gonna need to deploy Immunity again, because it seems like they've gotten their weapons back up, or some of them haven't been sabotaged properly. Go, 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 go! Can't remember which. Go, 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 go. Too much shit, not paying attention. Now, let's see what else can we do here. Go, go, go. Alright, this is a bad place to be. Let's go ahead and take out the sniper though, because we have a little opportunity to do that right here. So let's go ahead and do throw and low overload. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Alright. And now we're going to move away this way real quick and deploy lift. I'm gonna need to deploy a little immunity to keep myself up and running. All right, let's go ahead and have a little sabotage here. Hmm. Anyone on this way? No, I think it's just you and a couple back there. Oh, damn! That is the power of a shotgun with sledgehammer rounds. Alright. A little sabotage. Actually, let's put a little sabotage in the middle right here. There we go. Alright. Now get a little lift going. Last hostile. Let's go ahead and do a little something real quick. Didn't really need an immunity, the immunity at that time, but I figured it better be safe than sorry, just in case. Because you never know what might happen. But, we've already cleared out the remaining hostiles and we're seeing more dead sentries around the place. Things are not boding well. If there is one remaining scientist in this facility, I'm thinking his chances are pretty slim. His or her. Well, let's go ahead and hack this crate real quick, get whatever loot we can, and then move on. And there we go. We actually have three more containers back here. Let's go ahead and grab the med kit. And go ahead and unlock these crates. Alright. And one more for good measure. Hmm. How about. Oh, well, that's a fudge. Yeah, fudge. Well, there's Omni Gel. And there we go. Alright. And that's pretty much it for the loot in this area. We're going to go ahead and head to the back real quick. And I am going to take off my helmet. Actually, yeah. Let's take off our helmet. And our assignment is actually going to take us to this room right here where we're going to have a confrontation with someone that Shepard recognizes from her past. Specifically from a coos. So let's get braced for this assignment, and get ready to find out who's behind the deaths of these scientists. Stay back! I've got no grief with you. All I want is this bastard. Please! He's a madman! Mr. Toombs, you're insane! You need help! Shut up! You don't get to lie! You don't... Shepard? My god, 
Shepard, is that you? Corporal Tombs? But... But I saw you die on a coos. I, how did you get here? They took me, Shepard. The scientists. You can't prove any of this. This man is delusional. See, they were running tests on the Thresher Maws. They let those things hit us just to watch and study. I woke up in a holding cell. The scientists were delighted I'd survived. Now they had someone to run tests on. What did they do to you, Tombs? You can't believe Tombs! He doesn't have any proof! I demand a fair trial! Commander Shepard was there. She knows the truth. This man deserves to die, Shepard. For you, for me, for everyone else in the unit! Are you with me? So this is quite the development. We just ran into Corporal Tombs, a man who was in the same unit that Shepard was in on a coups when the Thresher Maws attacked. It seems that Shepard was reputed to be the only one who survived, but it seems those rumors were wrong. We have Corporal Tombs right here. Now, unfortunately, the timing of this is pretty unfortunate. We have Corporal Tombs about to kill the remaining Cerberus scientist who had a role in the events on the coups. We need to go ahead and talk him down. I can arrest him. He'll answer for his crimes in court. Weren't you listening? He was part of a secret organization. I don't know what Cerberus is, but they'll never let their operation become public. This is the only way. Are you helping me, or are you killing me? So we have a tough choice to make, folks. But if we do have enough points and charm or intimidate, we can persuade him to stand down. Now... It is curious how Cerberus seems to have so much with regards to Shepard's background. They seem to have a far-reaching influence in many spheres of the galaxy, especially the background of our Shepard, and that's very suspicious. We're going to need to stay on our toes. I feel like we haven't seen the last of Cerberus in the Mass Effect series. But for now, it's time to convince Tombs to stand down, because here he is pointing his gun at the only man who can tell the Alliance what happened to those soldiers on Akuz. We need to bring them both in alive, and hopefully we can get Tombs to seek help after this. You're better than this, Tombs. You're not like them. Don't tell me who I am. You got away with a few scratches and a scary reputation. The rest of the unit died, and I was tortured for years, Shepard. You can't judge me. You don't have the right. Tombs, if I could have helped you on a coos, I would have. All I can do is help now. Let me. <sighs> okay. I'm no murderer. They couldn't make me one. Just as long as he goes to trial. Maybe the screaming will stop now. I don't know. Those bastards can't hurt you anymore. Joker. Tell the 5th Fleet we need a ship for pickup. Aye, aye, Commander. Tombstairs are mostly at the floor, lost in his memories. You give the scientist a shove towards the door. Your mission is complete. The Alliance course will take it from here. And with that, folks, we finished up UNC Dead Scientists. Now, the assignment has been updated from um, what it was before to UNC Dead Scientists. But we've already finished up here. The only thing left to do is to head back to the Normandy and report back to Hackett. Now, if you don't have enough charm or intimidate, unfortunately, someone's going to die. And you don't want that to happen if you want the best outcome. But you can always debate whether or not it really had any impact. For us, playing a mostly Paragon character, we like to try and bring out as many people alive as possible. And just come back with a little bit of a warmer, fuzzier feeling in our hearts. So, it's time for us to board the Mako. Before we do, let's get our gear back. And with that, we're ready to go ahead and call for Exfil. Let's get back to the Normandy, and I will see you guys back in the CIC, where we're going to have a little debrief. So we've had quite the development in Shepard's background. We finally managed to get some closure, hopefully, regarding what happened on Akuz. And I think our Shepard will finally be able to at least have the benefit of knowledge and the understanding that she did some justice for her unit. Well, let's go ahead and open the galaxy map and have a debrief with Hackett. Message coming in. Patching it through. 
I reviewed your report on the situation, Commander. I'm glad to see you were able to take Dr. Wayne in alive. Now we can put him on trial and get some answers. Corporal Toombs seems to have found some closure, and hopefully with therapy, he'll have a normal life again someday. I hope this helped you find some peace, Commander. Thank you. Fifth Fleet out. And that is the end of UNC Dead Scientists. Hopefully we can, we can help Torporal Toombs find some help and some counseling for PTSD and whatever else he needs, because it seems like this is a man who really needs it. And hopefully that scientist gets what's coming to him. But we won't be able to find out the results of this trial until Mass Effect 2, so we need to stay tuned for that. One thing that I did not mention during the confrontation between Tombs and the scientist was that uh, Tombs, if you've completed UNC Hades Dogs, Tombs may have something to say regarding how he escaped from Cerberus. I didn't get it this time, but I have gotten it with other playthroughs of different um, backgrounds for Shepard. But people might have different results on that. I could not get the dialogue to fire off in my test recording despite whatever options I chose. So. Yeah, I think that's the curse of having the Soul Survivor background. Another thing I want to mention is that for the assignment that we just did, this is a strange something, but even if you have even if you have a different background that's not Soul Survivor, in other words, if you didn't have the background of your shepherd surviving a coups, during the confrontation when you're persuading Tombs to stand down, he may yeah, he tends to refer to you as if you had the background regardless. As if you both were on a coup, as if Commander Shepard was a sole survivor, even if you might be a war hero, or you might have the ruthless background. It's a little indiscrepancy I've noticed, so yeah, not sure what to make of that, but we're going to have to save our discussion of Shepard's background for later, because we are now done with most of the assignments in Mass Effect 1, save for the remaining ones that are tied to going to certain places and doing certain things, like the Citadel, or some of the stuff on Vermeer. And I'm not quite sure, like I mentioned before, I'm going to go ahead and post and make sure whether or not some of the extra stuff on Vermeer is flagged as assignments or if they're flagged as main missions. And you'll see that in the video as well. But for now, it's time to go ahead and we'll get some closure here and we're going to cut the video at this point and I'm going to get some rest, folks. So, I want to bid you guys a happy day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever may, you, ever you may be in this universe or the next. And it's time for me to hit the bunk. But I hope to see you guys next time, and next time we pick off, we're actually going to explore one final system, and I'm going to open up the galaxy map real quick. Those of you who have played Mass Effect 1 thoroughly and have played the Renegade um, background uh, and gotten as many Renegade points as you can, we're actually going to have a little bit of a unique assignment. For you guys, you'll probably head to the Plutus system where we're going to be tackling on the planet of Nanuel. But since we are not doing a Renegade character, I am trying to stick as close to the Paragon background as I can, we are not going to have that assignment. But next time, we're going to explore non -UL and look for any resources and items there, and I'm just going to walk around the surface and just show you guys what that area is all about. But for now, it's time for us to say farewell. Bye, folks.